Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation with integer solutions. In other words, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. We have a squared plus ab plus b squared equals 49. And from this equation, we're going to be finding the values of a plus b. So let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. First of all, notice that a and b are both squared. Therefore, this could be considered a quadratic equation. So let's go ahead and write it down as a quadratic equation. And I want to write it as a quadratic in a. So I can write it as a squared plus b a plus b squared minus 49 equals 0. So a squared and a are basically the terms with the variables and b squared minus 49 would be considered a constant. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is going to give us two solutions and then we're going to take that and go from there. So from here a can be written as negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times b squared minus 49. And in this equation, before we get into anything else, I wanted to look at what's under the radical, which is called the discriminant of this quadratic equation. Now discriminant, or in other words delta, gives us a lot of information about this equation, whether it's going to have real roots or not, and what the type and nature of the roots are. So the delta by definition is the expression inside the radical. It's going to be b squared. Let's go ahead and simplify it. Minus 4b squared plus 4 times 49, which is 196. And b squared minus 4b squared is going to be negative 3b squared. So delta is going to be 196 minus 3b squared. Awesome. So this is our discriminant. And obviously, we, we not only want this to be greater than or equal to 0 in order to have real roots, but also we want this expression to be a perfect square. Why? Because we want integer solutions. A is an integer. If the expression under the radical is not a perfect square, then its square root is not going to be rational and we're not going to get integer solutions. Make sense? So if you get something like negative 3 plus root 5 over 2, obviously, this can't be an integer, can it? So, we want this delta, the discriminant, to be a perfect square. Let's go ahead and set it equal to c squared. So, from here we get another Diophantine equation. Let's go ahead and write it down. c squared plus 3b squared equals 196. Awesome. A couple of things to think about. For example, 3b squared is a multiple of 3. So we can look at it from a mod 3 perspective. So in other words, if you look at the remainder of the pond division by 3, we're going to get the following. c squared is just going to stay as c squared. This is going to be 0 mod 3. And this is going to be 1 mod 3. So from here we get c squared is congruent to 1 mod 3. Now why did we look at it mod 3? Couldn't we look at it mod 2 or some other mod? We could. But mod 3 is helpful because we have uh, 3 as a coefficient, so it's going to make one of the variables disappear. Make sense? Okay, when does c squared congruent to, when is c squared congruent to 1 mod 3? There are three types of numbers uh, mod 3, and those numbers are 0, 1, and 2. So if c is congruent to 0, mod 3, so all of these conversations are going to happen mod 3. If c is congruent to 0, then c squared is going to be congruent to 0. If c is congruent to 1, then c squared is going to be congruent to 1 mod 3. And c, if c is congruent to 2, then c squared is going to be 4, but 4 is congruent to 1 mod 3. So there are two cases where we get c squared equals 1 mod 3, and those cases are c is congruent to 1 and c is congruent to 2. In other words, in other words, if our number is not a multiple of 3, its square is going to leave a remainder of 1. So you can also always test it out. Pick a number that's not a multiple of 3, like 2, 5, 8, right? Square these numbers. When you square them, you get 4, 25, and 64. Look at the remainders. 
they all leave a remainder of 1 upon division by 3. Make sense? Great. So in other words, you can never get a remainder of 2 upon division by 3 when a number is squared. All right. So if I if somebody ever tells you, hey, c squared is congruent to 2 mod 3, this equation has no solutions. Make sense? So our multiple, I mean, our c is not going to be a multiple of 3. And we do have a nice equation to solve, which is c squared plus 3b squared equals 196. Under these conditions, we can actually easily solve this problem. But let's take a look at a couple other things. For example, 3b squared is 196 minus c squared. Obviously, this is less than 196 because c cannot even be 0. By the way, 0 is a multiple of 3 in this sense. So our expression is actually c squared is greater than 0. So 196 minus c squared is going to be less than 196. When this tells you something, this tells you something. It shows you 3b squared is less than 196 or b squared is less than 196 divided by 3, which is less than 66, which is less than 81. Now, why did I do all these comparisons? Because first of all, this is the closest integer that is less than 196 over 3, right? And then, for example, if you uh, think about what is the closest number, if you divide 195 by 3, that's going to be 65. So obviously, this number is definitely less than 66, all right? And 66 is less than 81. So take a look at this. We got b squared less than 81, which implies b is less than 9, right? Obviously, we could also take the negatives, but let's go ahead and work on positives. Negatives are easy to handle. You can just, you know, switch them around. By the way, a and b are interchangeable, so whatever we find for b is going to be true for a as well. So since b is going to be less than 9 and is not a multiple of uh, actually, that's not true for b. c is not going to be a multiple of 3. So we can go ahead and take a look at some of the values. So, so here's another question. like, Can b, um, b be a multiple of 3? It definitely can, right? There is no restriction on that one. So let's go ahead and plug in some values for b and then find the c values. So we got c squared plus 3b squared equals 196. So b is going to be less than uh, 9. So if b is 8... You're going to get 3 times 8 squared, which is 192. C squared is going to be 4. So from here, C is going to be plus minus 2. Make sense? So you're going to basically plug in all these numbers and test them out. And for example, what if B is equal to 7? You're going to get 49. 3 times 49 is 147. Subtract 147 from 196. You're going to get 30, I mean 49, 49 gives you plus minus 7. Not all values are going to give you perfect squares. By the way, c squared must be a perfect square, so you just have to make sure that it works. Anyways, you plug in all these values, and then what are you going to find? Well, we call this whole thing something, right? 196 minus 3b squared. The discriminant, we called it c squared. So the square root of the discriminant is going to be c. So we're going to get the following from here. A can be written as negative b plus minus c divided by 2. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and write it down. A equals negative b plus minus c divided by 2. So these b and c values actually are going to give you the a values. So for example, and we have to split it up here. For example, we could go with a negative b plus c over 2 or negative b minus c over 2. So suppose... Suppose b is 8 and c is 2, all right? b is 8, suppose these are uh, ordered pairs. b is 8, c is 2. Negative 8 plus 2 divided by 2 is going to be negative 6 by 2, which is negative 3. So this is going to give you a equals negative 3. Since we're only interested in a and b here, negative 3 comma 8 is going to be a potential solution. From this one, we get a different ordered pair if b and c are... 8 and 2 again. This time we get negative 8 minus 2 divided by 2, and that is going to be negative 5. Since we're interested in, by the way, this is going to be A. Since we're interested in A and B, that's going to give us negative 5, comma 8. So notice that negative 3, comma 8 and negative 5, comma 8 both work. And there's a lot of ordered pairs that work. I'm just going to give you a list of them. 
so that you can take it from there. So let's go ahead and take a look. We have negative 8 comma 3, we have negative 8 comma 5, we have ne plus minus 7 comma 0, we have negative 7 plus comma 7, negative 5 comma negative 3, and then we have negative 5 comma 8, negative 3 comma negative 5, we have negative 3 comma 8, and then 0 comma plus minus 7, 3 comma negative 8, and then we have 3 comma 5, 5 comma negative 8, 5 comma 3, 7 comma negative 7. Notice that we have to switch A and B here because they are interchangeable. 8 comma negative 5, and finally 8 comma negative 3. So those are going to be the solutions pretty much, right? And then uh, we could also look at this equation from another perspective, but I think we've talked about it for long enough. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Actually, I'll see you soon with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.